In this video, I'm going to teach you five ways that players typically get themselves crossed off these college recruiting lists. So obviously for every aspiring ball player, they're chasing their dream, trying to make it to the next level. And with that comes playing in front of scouts, communicating with scouts, going to showcases and camps and all that stuff. So basically what you're trying to do is at the very least show yourself at your best, minimize some of your least distinguished characteristics, and hopefully just not make any missteps that are going to get you crossed off a list. So I'm Coach Dan Blewett. If you're new to my channel here, definitely consider subscribing. I put out new baseball content each week. And today, we're going to talk a lot about the recruiting process. So stick around. I think this is going to be a big help for a lot of you. All right, so the number one way to get crossed off a college scout's recruiting list is by having a bad attitude and by showing a lack of hustle. And I, one of the things I really want to impress upon you is that they are going to watch everything that you do. They're going to call every coach that you've played for. They're going to do a lot of digging to figure out who you are as a person. And for me, as a, as a former baseball academy owner and coach, we had our own uh, brand of teams. I was watching my players in the same way. So when I see a kid walk out to the outfield or maybe only runs two thirds of the way out to his position in left field and walks the rest of the way, that might be enough to get that kid crossed off a of scout's list if he's there watching him because they're trying to extrapolate. They're trying to predict what their habits are going to be like. Who is this person? Is he going to work really hard for me at my program or is he going to be kind of lazy or is again, they're trying to project. So it's really, really hard. So anything that makes them nervous, they're probably just going to move on to the next guy. So be really careful about your attitude and the reputation that you build. When you build a good reputation, your coaches are going to vouch for you. Other players are going to vouch for you and it's going to get through the grapevine that, okay, this kid pretty consistently gets high marks from everyone. Sounds like a good player for my program. The number two way the players get crossed off college recruiting lists is their parents. So parents, if you're watching this video, if you're in the, in the bleachers and you're screaming and you're berating officials and you're making life difficult on your kid's coach, it's hurting your, your son already. I guarantee it because I had, I had, I had a teammate who is now a high level uh, amateur coach. He coaches some showcase teams around the country. He called me about a couple of kids in my area because he was looking to kind of get some kids nationally for this big, big tournament. And he said, hey, tell me about this kid. I've seen him on the, the prep baseball report rankings. He seems pretty good. One of the first questions my friend asked me was, any parent issues? And on one of the three players that he asked me about, I said, yeah, this kid, their, their parents have been on me. It's been tough. Um, you know, it, it's a situation where you probably want to pass. So this is a situation that happens over and over and over. If you're giving your son's varsity baseball coach a hard time, it's already come back to haunt you. I guarantee it because college coaches call them and they want to know if the family is going to give them problems at the next level. So parents, you really need to be on your best behavior. And that just means being positive, let the bad stuff go. It always works itself out in the end anyway. And if you do need to talk with coaches, you have to do it in a productive way. That's not creating this conflict because again, we're all people and college coaches, they're going to figure it out. So even if I don't want to tell someone that, yeah, that kid's dad is kind of tough. Um, he's going to call four other coaches anyway. So none of us are going to lie because if we lie to a college recruiter today, he's not going to call us in the future and it's going to close a door for another kid. So be really careful parents about what you do in the bleachers watching games. The number three thing that you can do to get yourself crossed off a recruiting list is by not being physical enough. Now, I know that a lot of kids are waiting for a growth spurt or you're just not 6'4 and you're never going to be. Those things obviously are beyond your control and that's not what I'm talking about. But when we talk about weight room habits and nutritional habits, those things are very much in your control. And even if you're working out three, four days a week with a good strength coach on a good program, you need to eat to give yourself the, the cinder blocks to build that big, strong house. That's essentially what nutrition does. And the vast majority of kids, because this is what I did for nine years, they don't eat nearly enough. They say that they do, but really when we start to count calories and try to dig deeper, we find out they're eating like a 600 calorie, calorie breakfast, an 800 calorie lunch, and they're eating a kind of big dinner, but they're just not getting enough, enough calories during the day. So athletes, if you've gone to a college baseball game recently, you'll probably notice they are really big and strong. They are much bigger than when I played. And I was like a, a gym rat. I was a, a fiend in the weight room, but 
I would have been a very average player today as far as physical size, build, and strength. There's a strong culture of work ethic in the weight room now in baseball, which is great. But these players are getting more and more physical, and so the standard is rising for you in high school. So you really need to eat. Take eating like your job, because if you're not big and strong and physical, and a college scout comes out and watches you, and you're six foot one, 155 pounds, unless you've got some really special tools, they're probably gonna be like, eh, kind of looks more like a little kid than a man. You know, we've got a couple other kids over here who can throw harder, hit harder, run faster, and they're just physically built, they look like they're ready for college baseball. So be careful about your physical build and do whatever you can to control it. Number four, this is the fourth thing that'll get you crossed off a college recruiting list is bad contacts with college coaches. So here's what I mean by this. Obviously there's lots of showcases that you can go to and get yourself seen and get a profile on a, on a website or something. You can you know, pay for those services as well. You can get recruiting videos made. All that stuff is great. It can all be very, very helpful. But one of the big keys is emailing college coaches. So if you really want to go to, you know, Illinois State, then you should email Illinois State and tell them that you're really interested in their program, that you admire their program, you'd love to be a part of it, share some video and tell them about yourself. It's just like dating. If you really want to date someone, go tell them that you're interested in them. Show signs that you're interested. Schools have to do a lot of recruiting. And when they know a prospect is interested in them, it makes everything easier because then they can really look and say, wow, that kid actually is really good and he's interested in us. That checks two really big boxes and it makes it easier for them. So in doing that, you have to be strategic about how you contact these coaches. Mom and dad, don't ever, ever, ever email a college coach. No one cares about your opinion. It's just the way that it is because you're always going to have this bias. Most parents haven't played high enough baseball and they can't separate themselves again from that bias that it's their kid and they really want their kid to succeed. Parents don't ever email a college coach and tell them about your son. Ball players, you need to do this yourself. That's just the reality. You need to email college coaches yourself. Use your own words. Get help from someone. Email me. Ask your coach. Ask your parents for help proofreading it, but do not let your parents email your college coach because they'll just be like okay mommy and daddy are doing this for them see ya don't want them you have to be a grown-up going into college they're going to treat you like a grown-up and if you can't act like a grown-up they don't want you in their program so part of being a grown-up is saying this is my future i want to do this i want to get in touch with this coach i'm going to write the email myself in my own words so with that, you don't need to talk about how good you are. You don't need to do all that sort of stuff. Just share objective things. And that means share your stats, share your information, share other people who can contact or who they can contact as a reference, share video of yourself. Those are things that for me, I want to see if I'm interested in adding a player to my academy, for example. I'm going to make a decision whether he's good or not. I don't care about your opinion whether he's good or not. I'm going to decide for myself. Because every college program, what they believe is their standard is different. So what's good for Vanderbilt might not be good for you know Florida State, even though they're both very excellent programs. What they look for in players is just gonna be slightly different. So you just give them the tools, give them the objective data, video, stats, other people to contact, references, and let them sort it out themselves. So you don't need to really talk about yourself, talk about things that you're passionate about, talk about things in the school that you like. Hey, I wanna go to Florida State because X, Y, Z, I like these, these two majors. I think the canvas is great. I love your tradition of, of winning and of culture and player development. Talk about all that stuff, but you don't really need to talk about your own ability because they're going to decide what your ability is. But again, a really good way to get yourself crossed off a recruiting list is if mommy and daddy email one of these coaches and do that for you. And my last recruiting tip is social media. If you really want to get yourself axed from the discussion, uh, you know, swearing on social media, posting sketchy stuff, and it's obviously a nebulous, ambiguous thing of what is appropriate on social media and not, but really it kind of boils down to this. If you feel like it might be inappropriate or someone might say, this isn't like a high character thing to post, then probably just don't post it. You have to be really careful about your, your curated stuff, right? So things that maybe you're resharing from other people because they're a reflection on you. So don't necessarily retweet something that maybe doesn't, isn't like your personal values. It's often seen as an endorsement when you retweet, some, when you retweet someone, even though that might not be the case. 
The other thing to think about is, yeah, you get to put more thought in like a regular Instagram post, right? Like one that you're gonna type out the caption for that's gonna be on your feed. Those are more easy to control. The ones that you can definitely still get in trouble with are the stories. Stuff where it's just like a quick snapshot of what you're doing. Maybe you just accidentally catch someone doing something or catch yourself um, doing something that you just maybe didn't wanna post and you didn't really think through it as much. The ones where you can kind of think through it, again, like, oh, this is going on my main feed, um, those are easier to control. The stories, the ones you should be care be careful about because if someone's just flipping through it and college coaches will ask for your social media and they will follow you, um, they're going to look for patterns of behavior. And if they always see you out partying, out doing certain stuff, they're going to make certain judgments about that. And you can't, you can't fault them for that either. They're trying to figure out who you are as a person and if they want you in your, in their program. So be super careful about social media. The best thing to do is just lay low, post stuff that you feel like is obviously wholesome, obviously a reflection of who you are and what you're interested in and all that's fine, but be really careful about times when you're socializing with other people because it just might be misconstrued in a way that maybe isn't reality either. People don't have context when they're watching social media stuff. So hopefully these recruiting strategies were helpful. Um, obviously the college recruiting process is difficult and just to give yourself the best possible chance of getting the outcome that you want and finding your dream school just don't make these easy missteps that are very easily controllable. So to recap, players, watch your behavior, watch your hustle, everyone is watching you at all times and your reputation will follow you. Parents, the exact same is true for you. Players, make sure you're physical enough, make sure you're eating to support your weightlifting habits and if you wanna play in college baseball and especially the higher tiers, you know, division two, II, division one, you need to go see how physical those players are and you need to make yourself into that as fast as possible, as early as possible. And if you aren't, if you're still a skinny kid, don't expect for big D1s to come calling because they won't. Number four, bad contact with coaches. Mommy and daddy don't email a college coach ever. They don't want to see an email come from your email um, inbox. Kids, send it from yours. Fill out the online college questionnaires, do all that stuff, but it needs to come from you. You're gonna be an adult in college. Your parents are not gonna contact the coach, hopefully, and you're gonna be doing your thing. So start now, you contact the coaches yourself. And lastly, be careful about social media, all right? Hopefully this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. You can hit subscribe below, check out my books, my other videos, my online courses. I do tons of stuff to help baseball families, players, and parents. So stick around and I'll see you in the next video.